Honestly, sometimes I like to mess with you guys. I know. All right, so seriously, don't freak out, but I just wanted us to like, get in here and get settled and get stuff written down. We have, like, well, not we have, maybe. I chatted with a couple of you guys about, like, how Monday's homework was kind of a two-day homework, but then we started the next lesson, and I assigned the next homework, and then that was kind of going to be a two. So, here's where it is. It's to you. I said, sure, yeah, fine, whatever, go ahead. So, here's where we're at. There's one more key piece of information. Okay, maybe two. But a main one more piece of information for today that you need to be able to attack all these excellent problems. And actually, we can probably give you both other little pieces of information. I, I can't remember if we gave you intro of the one piece yesterday or not. Um, but then, and I was talking, I think it was Quinn, um, who said, you know, when I wrote down my homework, I was like, geez, this is a lot of problems. And then I went to do it, and they're easy. Because once you know the rules, you can knock these things out in like literally two seconds. Like not an exaggerate, like literally two seconds to think about it and write it down. So um, that's all of the practice for 823. And I would like us to do all of it to get skilled and comfortable with this. But I know that we're at the end of the quarter and I know like we've all been catching up and freaking out about mastery and practice assignments may have fallen by the wayside. So my thought here is to quickly talk about the last thing in 822, which disappeared for some reason, and then talk about 823 for like five or ten minutes, and then let you do whatever. So if you need to catch up on previous chapter eight homeworks, so be it. If, unfortunately, you're way behind and you're still working in chapter seven, you might need to do that. If you still have something that needs mastered for today, like I have some papers to give back to some people that are still progressing. You might need to come see me for that or like, you know, work on that. So that's my game plan for the next 40 minutes. Any oppositions? You don't, you don't have to be here. I'm not saying I'm going to change my plans, but if you're opposed, then you, know, you can tell me. Yeah. Yes. So I need to put it up on the board kind of spanning Tuesday, Wednesday, and then today's 823 is kind of going to span like Wednesday, Thursday. It, I, I'm just going to like, at some point, I didn't want to, so I debated making today just kind of like a free day, but for people trying to work ahead on the next homework, there's some info that they need to know. And I don't want people just like guessing and learning things wrong. So I wanted to talk about that stuff real quick. Now this will guide to the info that you need to know, this final problem. So this is 865 from 822, so if you still have yesterday's notes, you can just continue those. I think we can pretty quickly solve through a couple of these, but a couple of these might be a bit tricky. So if I look at, at, actually, take a minute, write down these four problems, and then try to solve them. I hope you didn't break that. I don't know. I just punched it across the room. Uh, I did once, probably the least amount of restraint that I've had as a teacher was when I threw a stapler across the room because it had like, been wasting my time for days. Um, I threw it that way. It broke. Don't worry. Um, Solve those problems. Sorry, I'm recentering the board. You should have a textbook out. So really, I'm not that sorry. Sorry, not sorry. By the way, uh, this isn't really your problem, but we're missing the CC2 number 59 textbook. If it's not back by spring break, the math savvy kids will no longer have loaner textbooks to use. So if you find CC2 book 59 around, we would very much appreciate it coming back home, please. Yeah. It doesn't matter whose it was, it's no one's now. It's not a classic now. No, no. Hey guys, that doesn't matter. Unless you're like speculating, can we all have class together? Which I don't think that ever really works. But... Now, if you're trying to do homework with other people, yeah, the people that go to Mr. Hall for math, you can do that with them. They would understand what you're doing. It's really sad. We have all the other books.
What do I do? Chloe, you were the last person yesterday. Jessica, if I'm dividing, we subtract the powers and get two to the second. So, Caitlin, if I go to B and I go to subtract there, what do I end up with? Trust yourself. B, 4 minus 5. <laughs> so this is weird, right? You're like, wait, hold on. Right beside this, please humor me and write out the expanded form. Because this is going to lead us into the next lesson. Now we said yesterday, and well, every day, a number divided by itself is 1. So please don't say it cancels. It reduces out to 1. We're trying to get away from the word cancel because cancel makes it sound like it's gone. It changes into 1. It reduces into 1. They don't cancel. They work well with each other, actually. So this ends up 1, 1, 1, 1. So really 1 over 3. But if I do that subtraction, like work for Jessica up there, I get 3 to the negative 1. Is that because you made negative 3? No. no. Oh, it's absolutely not going to make my number negative. Process this right now. Take a minute. Negative powers do not change your sign. What's a positive power described? multiplication multiple times. A negative power describes division some amount of times. So 3 to the negative first power means divide by 3 once. 3 to the negative second would mean divide by 3 twice. Repeated division now has a shortcut. So if somebody says cut that in half, cut that in half, cut that in half again, you're like, oh, that's just 2 to the negative third power. Right? Divide by 2, divide by 2, divide by 2. 2 to the negative third. So if we look at C, back to our easier situation, class, what would this become? Y to the third. Now we got to be careful here. D, Savannah, X squared. I was just going to wait until you just said okay. Yeah, the Y is Y to the second, Y to the second. They, they reduce out to one. So this part B is the entire next lesson. There you go. Connor? If you're putting an equation, what's repeated exponent? An exponent to an exponent? Like we did yesterday, the power to a power. So these, hold on, let me capture this real quick. These. Well, sorry, more so this. That's 20 cubed to the eighth power. So this really turns into 20 to the 24th, but that's a power to a power. This is, I mean, you could write it a different way, but this is the easiest way to understand. You could write it like 20 with the little three carats, eight, like carat means to the power, and you could keep doing that, but you can also just stack parentheses and keep putting powers. All right, back up here then. If you look at 72 really quick, this is just trying to bring our brains back to what we were doing in the last lesson. You don't need to write anything down. So put your pencil down. Put your eyes up on the board. Which of these process through on your own? I'm going to give you a couple minutes to just think. You don't need to talk to anyone. Which of these are right? Which of these are wrong? 
Don't talk. Just think on your own. It's hard for me. Guys, this is a growth. Um, we didn't set growth goals this year with you guys, at least I don't think formally. This is a growth goal of mine to give you time. I, I'm bad at giving classes enough time to process and be in your own head thinking. Because I should not be doing your thinking for you. Um, let's use cards. Braylon, what do you think about A? That's right. How do you know? <laughs> yeah, three, four, make seven, the two, not, yeah, so it's good. Teak, what do you think about B? I think it's incorrect, why? Uh, what should we do there? Ah, uh, combine them how, what do you mean? I'll add them, so that should be two to the seven. Mallory, what about C? You guys said you were good. No, I'm really good. Speak up. Say it more time, please. Bray Din, what do you think about C? I think Take it a chunk at the time, or a chunk at a time. The sevens. Would you end up with a seven on the bottom? No. No. Yeah. Yeah. How many sevens do we have on top? Two, seven times seven, right? How many sevens do we have on bottom? Three. Seven times seven times seven. So wouldn't two of them can uh, reduce out to ones and one seven's left on the bottom all scared and alone by himself? So yeah, seven would end up on bottom. When we look at the eights, eight, eight, eight over eight, eight. Yeah, eight, this should be good. This would, because this would become eight to the first on top, uh, sorry, seven to the first on bottom, or another way we could write this out, and it might benefit you to do this, is eight times seven to the negative one. That will produce this, because a negative power tells you divide that many times. So even though I'm multiplying here, this makes me then divide. You might write that down just for good measure. Uh, indeed. Connor, what do you think? Yeah. Okay, why? Because five plus three. Oh, no, that's wrong. Okay, why? Because it's not, because you can't do three times three, it's like five and ten power. We don't multiply the bases together because that's what this number tells me. It's three times three times three times three times three times three times three. So this, this is why you almost said it was right, should be three to the seven. Yeah, I could do the number three. Marin, what do you think about E? Eyebrows? What do you think? I did look at that one. That was the one I was Write this down in your paper. Six squared over six. Because this is two days lesson. That's why I didn't make you write down the other ones. This becomes six times six. The denominator is six times six times six times six times six. 
If I'm writing it out, you can write it out. You're younger than me. One, one, these guys are left. So this is really one over six to the third. Or if I don't want to write it in fraction form, how could I write it in simple exponent form? No. Even simpler, George. I knew you would have corrected it, but I wanted to get somebody else's job. This would be 6 to the negative 3. So that one's right. And then F. Class, what should F be? One. F is the hardest. One. I don't know. I think it's 0. Any value. Any value. I mean, we get in the habit of saying any number divided by itself. Guys, it's any value over itself is 1. You could have x squared plus x plus 1. If it's over, x squared plus x plus 1, it reduces out to 1. All right, questions on this. We're going to real quick hit some negative powers, and then I'm going to release you guys to go to practice or do revisions. Yeah. Negative and like Yes. Now, we're not going to deal with those today. Um, because this is really like a, um, it's really, this is meant to be a two-day lesson. So we're going to do more of this lesson at some point. Um, and actually, I'm probably going to leave, probably going to leave this off very soon, like within the next three minutes. Um, so guys, this kind of table right here, I'm just trying to get some more information in your heads real quick before I give you time to practice. We're going to come back to this lesson for another day. Okay, so hear me when I say this. That's how your homework's going to be spread out. Um, and this is quarter four homework, and I'm not going to collect chapter eight before we go to break. So if you're behind, I hate saying this, but don't freak out about chapter eight right now. You have spring break to do that, right? Like you can catch up over spring break, but you do need to get chapter seven done because that, like, I want that in before um, we go to break. That will be a quarter four grade, but I want to do chapter seven work. So if you haven't gotten that in yet, if you're one of those people, I have a stack of it over there. I'm just still begging you to turn it in before I post it in that. But if you have chapter seven work, still please turn that in. If they follow this down, every time we go down, we're dividing by 10, right? 1,000, 100, 10. This would be one, because any number to a zero power, right? Then this becomes, and now we kind of know how this works, it's one over 10. 1 over 100 because that's 1 over 10 times 10. Or this is 1 over 1,000 because how many 10s would be on bottom? Yeah, 3, right? So this is just one more reminder of how the negative powers work and why. And at this point, I want to give you guys time to revise things, catch up in things, whatever else. So to not to call people out on the spot, but I'm probably going to go over whose homework I have, and i got to hand back papers real quick. So give me a couple minutes before you bombard me with questions or anything else. Um, Braylon, what were you just asking? I don't, I, not, I don't know. The G might be silent. 